this is great. Uh, so first of all, thanks for taking time and uh, getting in touch with us. Uh, it's it's uh, I've, I've seen all your videos and uh, it has been and uh, most of them do not have an idea of what they want to do. They they did engineering just because of peer pressure and everyone is doing engineering. They are doing engineering, but most of the time they end up saying, "Hey, okay, I'm done with four years of engineering. What am I going to do next?" So. So that's that's what I, I thought. Uh, I'll, so that that was the point where we said, okay, let's get in touch with people and ask people what they think about engineering and what they they felt and uh, that that they could pass on to people to students. And uh, we thought this might be a, a forum for us to do that. And uh, we started getting in touch with uh, our contacts and uh, started reaching out and see how it works so and uh, now it's now it's you so it's it's been like one and a half months before we thought about it and started doing this so it's been it's been um well you're very welcome uh, the questions that uh, uh, that you're exploring I think are very interesting one thing that we could just start right off with is you had mentioned that students often um, don't understand why they're doing math or what the real relevance is going to be in the long run. And is that a good way of understanding that question? Exactly. So one of that questions are, I'm, I'm studying complex math. I'm studying integral calculus, differential calculus. What am I going to use this in real life? Is it really going to use, am I really going to use matrices in real life? That's the question. Uh, I go to the gym. And I work out using a particular set of weights, right? That 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 are right there in the gym for me, and they're they're special, and they're only at the gym, and I only do them when I go to the gym. So why do I do it at all? I'm never going to go out walking in the street and run into a set of weights just like that set of weights and have to pick it up as some part of my daily task. So what do I do it? I do it because in general, my body needs a workout of different types of muscles. Will I ever encounter precisely that set of weights in the real life? No, I won't. But I will encounter situations where I need to use some of those same kinds of muscles. Looks like we've got it. Uh, uh, so when we're doing something a little bit difficult, like with math, you're actually forming neural circuits that can help you grapple with other topics that are completely different but are actually really difficult for you to understand. And that those mental exercises you're going through when you're learning about matrices, when you're learning about derivatives, when you're learning about integrals, th those mental exercises give you the mental flexibility to understand very difficult topics when they're later put in front of you. There was a, an excellent business professor, an analyst named Mike Hammer, who did a, an analysis. What was, he was looking for, what was the top common factor between the best companies in the world? What were there any factors that these best run companies had in common? And he found that there was one single factor, and that was that all of the CEOs of the best run companies were originally trained as engineers. So engineering teaches you to think in terms of trade-offs. It teaches you to think in a, 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 in a complex way about difficult kinds of subjects and that kind of mental exercise, it, it may seem like, oh, I'm never going to use these exact matrices when I get out in real life. Well, maybe not, but you're going to use some of those same neural circuits, and you might as well tune, tune them up while you have a chance. Sure. Uh, that's, that's, that's a brilliant way to think about it, because um, just, like, just like workout, where uh, we just work our muscles for a better life. Uh, here we are working our mental muscles to actively think about a new set of problems which we will face in the future. So yeah, um, that's great. Uh, so do, do you want to introduce yourself, Barbara? 
Sure. Uh, I'm Barb Oakley, and I'm I'm so pleased to be here. It's it's a privilege to speak with you all. And I don't know you personally yet, but I I hope that what I might be able to share might give you uh, something that will be helpful in your life. As it turns out, I uh, I'm going to share a dirty little secret. Uh, I was terrible, terrible, terrible in math and science. I flunked my way through elementary, middle, and high school math and science. I remember being called into the dean of students when I was in eighth grade because I would just read books instead of actually studying math. And I remember vehemently telling her, I will never use math in my life. I hate it. And, you know, the, the ironic thing is I'm now a professor of engineering uh, and I'm the real deal. I, I publish in top journals. I, I, I very much um, appreciate my engineering training. But what had happened was I, I had thought I just love languages. I love learning languages. And that's all I want to do is learn a foreign language. Now, I, in India, it's it's much more common for people to speak several languages. But in the US, we are really, uh, we're so backwards. Uh, we, we oh, generally, we, a lot of us speak only a single language. And I, I always dreamed when I would grow up that I would speak, learn to speak another language. And so at that time, there wasn't a way for you to get uh, an inexpensive, you know, college loans or college degrees or anything. I couldn't afford to go to college on my own. So I enlisted in the army because uh, they would pay for me to learn a new language. And so I did. I, I enlisted. I was a private. I, and I learned Russian. And just sort of on a whim picked Russian. And I, I ended up, I got an in-service ROTC scholarship and ended up a, uh, a captain, uh, ultimately. And then I, I finally worked. Uh, I uh, found myself on Russian trawlers on, on the, up in the Bering Sea and working as a translator there. And I, I worked down at the South Pole Station, and that's where I met my husband. So I always say I had to go to the end of the earth to meet that man. And but I decided when I got out of the military that I wanted to try and see if I could retrain my brain because I could see that there was a big need for people with a good technical background, some kind of technical expertise. And I like didn't have anything like that at all. I'd always thought I couldn't do it. But I, I started to try to retrain my brain. I, I started at remedial high school mathematics, and it, and it was very, very difficult. But if I'd known then what I know now about how you change your brain, I could have made it a lot easier on myself. And so that's, that's what I try to teach now, is how can you learn more easily? And it turns out there's some underlying commonalities in how we learn, whatever we're learning, whether it's language, whether it's math, whether it's dance, whether you name it, there's underlying commonalities. And if we understand these, we can leverage our learning and learn with, learning hard things is never super easy, but we can uh, at least make it so we're not quite as frustrated. So along with Karen Sanowski, who's the Francis Crick professor at the Salk Institute, I teach the 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 world's largest massive open online course called learning how to learn we have about one and a half million students now and it's uh, it's quite exciting sharing these different ideas about learning and most of them i think what what makes people happy is that most of these ideas are very very simple uh, some of them, they kind of know, but they haven't known why before, and they haven't seen it all put together in a, a simple way that they can understand and really use these ideas. And so, so that's part of what I do besides my regular day job as a professor of engineering here at Oakland. Mm -hmm.